Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. This is the first session of Gamification Week of ELBX Online. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm with eLearning Brothers. Today, we're going to be talking about why you should gamify your learning. Uh, this webinar will be recorded. We will get a copy of it posted on the ELBX Online landing page. Um, and we'll also have a couple downloads for you there as well that will include some notes and, uh, and other things that we pick up here today. Um, if you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions in the questions panel. So please use that as you need. Looks like a couple of you have already found that. So uh, do send us your questions. We'll get to as many of your questions as we can. All right, so to talk to us about games, we have Stephen Baer, Head of Creative at the Game Agency, and uh, I'll stop talking. Turn the time over to you, Steve. Super. Well, thanks for uh, having me on, and thank you all for attending. Really appreciate it. Um, just as a background, so I'm one of the founders, and I run Creative at the Game Agency, as Andrew said. Um, I also write a monthly column for Forbes talking about uh, game-based training um, and game-based solutions. And before starting the company about 12 years ago, I was director of marketing over at Atari. So I've been in the gaming industry for about 15, 16 years. Um, really think it's an amazing medium and certainly uh, an incredibly effective one for training. Um, today, we're gonna talk about a few things. Um, we're gonna talk about why training games are effective. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to map, map different types of mechanics effectively to your learning objectives. And we'll go through a whole number of them. Um, we're going to talk about uh, how easy it is to build games uh, in some cases, and certainly how important it is to track results through games, and we'll talk about that in, in detail. Um, and the last thing is when to use games. Um, you know, there, there are different types of experiences, whether it is micro-training, uh, M-learning, e-learning, instructor-led training, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, the first question is why games? And, you know, get... I used to get asked this actually all the time, um, less and less, I think it, it, it's more uh, bought, bought in at this point that the reality is that employees are incredibly distracted, just we are as people, period. Um, employees are not stimulated by their average training, and that's no offense to all of us in this industry, but you know, I think we're all trying to figure out together, how do we make something uh, much more engaging and much more exciting? Uh, and quite honestly, uh, most of the training that we're doing is passive, so we're not giving employees feedback that they desire. So, so games, games that are engaging, uh, they certainly increase your level of attention because they're required to dig in on a much uh, deeper level. They sustain your focus as a result of that. And uh, across all this, they're driving really critical uh, performance improvements. So we're gonna talk all about that, but that's, that's uh, my short answer on why games. Um, before I go much further, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. I'd ask that you uh, type into the uh, chat function what are some of the favorite games that you like to play? Uh, not regarding training, but just period. Uh, and that could be console or PC games, mobile games, board games, card games, um, and any of the above. And Andrew, if you don't mind just kind of uh, uh, outlining what people are typing, that'd be great um, as they come in. Sure. Wordscape, any game, mobile and PC games, Candy Crush, Elder Scrolls, Word Games, uh, Planet Coaster, Jewel Mania, uh, Simulation Games, Word Games, Mario Kart, Mario Odyssey, uh, Detroit Becoming Human, that's a good one. Uh, Phase 10, Frogger, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Clue, sounds like I've got a lot of PlayStation players out here. Wii Bowling and, and Nintendo, Solitaire, Monopoly, Brain Games, Scrabble, Card and Board Games, uh, Jenga, that's another one. The latest Spider-Man, you can't go wrong there, again, PS4. Um, mobile games, object search games, Boggle, World of Warcraft, Twilight Struggle, all of the above. Uno, got an Uno. Favorite game is Uno. And all right, so there's a really, there's a, there's a really cross uh, sector of games here, and, and I heard some of these. I think we heard Monopoly. Um, I think I heard Scrabble. Um, I'm just trying to think if there were any others here. I think I heard Candy Crush. Um, the reality is, is that a lot of the games that you guys just outlined, um, and a lot of these games here, really could be training games in, in many ways. And we're going to talk about why and, and how. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, when to use different ones. Um, all the games that um, you outlined, and certainly the ones I just had in that last slide, um, have three things in common. They have rules, they have strategies, and they have goals. So what do I mean by that? And I, I, I always use the, the you know, game of baseball as an analogy of rules. And you have three strikes, uh, you know, an inning, you have three outs. Uh, sorry, three, three strikes to, to get the batter out, three outs to uh, end the inning, and nine innings to end the game. So those are the rules, right? You have a strategies, you might try a curveball or a bunch or stealing or lots of other things. And you have goals, which is ultimately to get the most runs at the end of the game. Uh, and and it's, as a result, you're the winner. 
Um, all those games have this, these things. They have rules, they have strategies, they have goals. And quite honestly, um, th those are really important things because you're gonna draw your user in, um, you're gonna teach them to follow certain rules, you're gonna have them try to identify the best strategies to be successful, and you're gonna try to have them be successful at whatever you, you want their goal to be, right? Whatever, however you're defining success. Um, so, so we talk about really using brains, the training of brains and games as the perfect marriage, right? They, they provide a safe pace to, to try and to fail and uh, hopefully throughout that course learn, right? They're reinforcing the knowledge uh, because it's not a passive learning experience. It's a very uh, active learning experience. We are having someone try that stuff. And as a result, they're gonna see what works and what doesn't work. And they're gonna keep trying until they get there. Um, and it, also about it, we're improving retention. Studies after study have shown that the more you engage somebody, uh, the more it's going to stick in their brain. Um, so, so really, we, we find that games, in many ways, are the most effective tool to actually train uh, and reinforce and drive that long-term retention. So how do you choose what game to use for your learning objective? And that's a really tough question. Um, so one of the things that we've done is uh, we, we use this chart as a starting point, right? It's the taxonomy, if you will, right? Aligning your different performance or learning objectives. I want people to be able to memorize things or to be able to judge better, or to understand the consequences of their, of their actions or to be better strategists or to be able to simulate out different things. Um, what skill sets align with that? And by the way, if you obviously need a, a copy of this uh, deck, because there's a little, some of these are eye charts, uh, happy to send that along, or, or uh, the folks who are e-learning brothers will as well. Um, but what skill sets align to those? So under memorization, I want someone to be able to describe something effectively, or I want someone to be able to find or identify something. I want somebody to be able to list something. Um, as you start to look at the the performance or learning objectives, the skill sets that you want to improve, you can start to say what type of game mechanics align most effectively with those, right? And we're going to go through a whole bunch of them. But I think it's important to not just use a game because it's fun, but use a game because it's the right game to match with your performance learning objective. Um, so a bunch of examples. So one of the things that uh, eLearning Brothers and the Training Arcade, sorry, and the Game Agency have done together um, is we, we've launched uh, the Training Arcade, which is a series of today eight games uh, that really uh, apply to a whole bunch of these different skill sets. So we have Jeopardy and Trivia and Scramble, um, you know, that, that look at different uh, skill sets uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, we have um, scenarios, which is much more of like a branching dialogue. Uh, we have sort it, uh, which is in dragging and dropping to the right category, the right order. Um, then more about process. We have recall, which is identifying key, uh, key, key insights to different, um, visuals or videos. Um, we have more gaming games, jump or match, which is more about, you know, quick, you know, being quick on your feet and being able to think through different, uh, items, calculating, solving, predicting. Um, so, Lots of different mechanics, and we can look at each of these and identify where they've been most effectively used. Um, together, we have now several hundred companies using these uh, turnkey games uh, to reinforce their content. Um, all these, I would say, are uh, really micro in, in, in essence and are designed to reinforce as opposed to teach. Um, but one, one, one set of stats across all these, we just did a study of a thousand games that have been built in the last few months. We saw some interesting things across these um, eight, eight mechanics. So one, we saw that the average player was coming in for six minutes uh, per session, but then more importantly, they came back. We saw that the average uh, player came for a total 2.9 sessions. So they almost came back two uh, more full game plays on their own accord. Um, and, and I always kind of, Joke, I said, how many of us uh, see uh, our, our learners say, gosh, I, I wanna come back and do your, your training course again? Well, in this case they are, which is really great. It's really acting as a really strong reinforcement tool for what we're teaching them. Um, so they're playing a total of about 18 minutes, um, but probably the most important is we're seeing a, a, that they are, they're working. We're seeing a, a measurable lift, 64% in that six minute period of time of knowledge. Um, we're seeing that uh, just based on how we're deploying the questions, uh, and almost like if you think about, um, uh, uh, um, different, different cards, we're, we're basically delivering the uh, question. We're seeing whether they're getting it right or wrong in flashcard style, um, and putting the, putting it back maybe about three or four or five, um, spaces later, asking the question again, reinforcing along the way until they get it right. We're seeing a 64% lift in knowledge, um, in that gameplay experience. And that is great. Um, so 
they're playing, they're coming back to play more, they're learning, and they're having fun. And all of that is, in my mind, a successful training experience. Um, the other thing that we're doing is certainly we're using the data um, of play and making sure that it, it uh, has an important um, result on how we're delivering the training going forward. So we're looking at the number of users, we're looking at their scores and how they're ranking, and number of sessions and um, the duration of their sessions. We're looking at um, key trends about incorrect and correct answers and, and total questions answered. Um, and probably more importantly, we're also looking at behavioral trends. So we're trying to identify, looking at the data, um, who this individual is. Are they a tenacious learner? Are they a fast learner? Um, do they have really strong quantitative skills? Do they have really good um, people skills? Where do they belong most effectively with my organization? And that is one of the things that, once again, games can do that almost no other medium can do. They can really give you those insights as to who your audience is and where they belong in your organization. Um, and quite honestly, uh, how you can uh, make them most effective uh, as an employee. Um, I always use the example of Candy Crush. Candy Crush uh, is a game that uh, drives almost $600,000 of revenue every day uh, to, to King.com, which is the, the publisher of the game. Um, and, and one of the reasons that it's so effective is the company itself is constantly taking their game and uh, editing it, uh, changing it, uh, improving it. And one of the things that certainly uh, I'm not suggesting that everyone on this call should become game designers and that that should be your only job. but the really neat thing is with uh, the games that we've showed you so far, all of them can be tweaked based on what we're seeing as far as the, the knowledge trends of our employees and utilized in, 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 to, you know, to improve over time to make them more effective and to make your training more effective. So uh, you know, don't think of a game as something you build once and you deploy. Think of it as something you build once and you look at the data and you improve it and improve it because quite honestly, the improvements to the game are going to improve your employee's performance, which is obviously all of our end goal. So where and how often should we use games? Um, it's, it's a question I get asked all the time. Um, we really look at it as a continuous learning uh, framework. We think that you want to prepare your employees certainly early on, um, and you can certainly do that uh, through games. They're, they're great uh, you know, training tools. You want to obviously simulate stuff uh, over time, and so make sure that their on-the-job performance is uh, improved. And there's lots of things you can do to uh, look at what someone's doing and try to have them uh, do it in a virtual world, uh, fail in a safe environment, um, and certainly then you can look at areas of improvement, whether that is um, you know, skill sets, whether that's personalities, um, use it as a coaching tool um, and use it as a way to hopefully uh, improve their performance overall. Um, so, and, and, and it's not like you just do it these three times and you're done, it is a cycle in our opinion. Um, and games, once again, are, can be done as deep or they can be done as simple uh, executions. And we're going to go through both of those. Um, but certainly on the micro side, as you're building out tiny games, um, they're a great reinforcement tool. They're a great way to incentivize your employees. They're a great way to um, certainly provide meaningful feedback to your employees along the way. Uh, so we talked about micro games and, and uh, you know, those, those small ones from the training arcade. There are much deeper uh, e-learning simulations uh, and, and bigger, deeper games, which we're going to talk about in a moment. There's instructor-led games. Um, but in, in my mind, these are the three venues that you might want to use games overall. Um, and they're all different experiences. So here are the micro games. We're going to keep moving forward. Um, on the e-learning side, um, and here are a bunch of examples, by the way, that e-learning brothers has done or the, uh, the game agency has done. Um, but you can build much deeper simulations that are story driven, that are character driven, that uh, you know, are process driven, and really have someone connect with the content uh, on a deeper level, try certain things out, see the repercussions. Uh, this gets into strategy, this gets into uh, process, this gets into behavioral trends, um, and you can really start to understand what does your employee know. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the, the micro games that I showed you are certainly much more of a reinforcement tool. These examples in many ways can often be much more of a teaching tool, right? Um, you know, the, you're having them try stuff out. You're having them see real time in a safe environment what works and what doesn't and what the repercussions of their decisions are. Uh, the last of those three categories is instructor-led uh, games. And I'm a big believer of weaving games throughout uh, any instructor learning experience. Um, you know, a, a, a blended learning experience in, in an ILT environment 
uh, from slides to videos, games, activities, polls, leaderboards, prizes, um, ultimately can light up a room. Uh, it can uh, drive both competition and collaboration, and it can get people really out of their you know, chairs and, and actively working with the content in a meaningful way. Uh, so whether you're uh, doing something that's deployed on you know, everyone's individual uh, mobile or tablet devices, whether you're doing a tabletop of 10 with a, uh, with a screen that everyone needs to work around, whether you're doing kiosks around the room, games can be a really effective tool to actually take the content that you've just taught and have people work it through. The also fantastic thing is, is that going back to data, and we, we preach this all the time, is that as an instructor, we can deploy a game in a, in a classroom setting and we can see real time, gosh, 40% of this room doesn't understand this concept. Let's back up for a minute and make sure that everyone's on the same page. And once again, that is one of the benefits of this active learning experience is that you're getting people to try it and then you're getting the data real quick on what people know and don't know. So six takeaways uh, and six tips to getting started. Uh, let's start with some of the takeaways. Uh, takeaway number one, uh, I think it's always important to focus on fun before you focus on learning. Um, I'm not saying that learning should take a back seat, but what, what, I, what I often hear is, gosh, we built a quiz, so God, we're doing games. And I'm like, you no, know, you're not, because uh, quizzes are often not fun. Um, and, and, and I don't think that anyone on that list, when I said, what games do you like to play, said, I like a good quiz, right? So you don't want chocolate covered broccoli. You want to make something that is a fun game first, but that really ties to learning experience. Um, and will be memorable as a result. Um, you want to also align your gameplay with the performance or learning objectives that you have. Uh, a game for game's sake doesn't work, right? You want to make sure it's the right mechanic to reinforce the, the, the learning objective, the performance objective, the skill sets that you want people to be great at. The next one is make sure that the in-game in experience is driving learning, right? So this comes back to the data. You want to see that you have that lift. Um, and if you don't see that lift, you want to make sure that uh, that that you tweak the game accordingly to make sure that it's more effective. Um, and we have lots of tools around that as well. Happy to talk about that offline. Um, the next thing is, is make sure it starts off easy and you can increase the difficulty over time, right? So we think about some of the games that we like, whether it's uh, you know, Angry Birds or Cut the Rope or, or any of the ones that you know, were, were described. Some of those are early levels, they're pretty simple. And you want someone to, you want it to feel approachable. You want someone to feel success. You want someone to feel like they have accomplished something. And over time, you want them to hopefully dig in a little bit uh, for a deeper or uh, more challenging experience. Number five, you want to provide feedback, especially if you think about millennials today. And, and obviously, that's almost half of our workforce um, you know, with every year that, that goes by. Um, they want constant feedback. And games are a great environment to provide that. So whether it's corrective or incorrective feedback or um, you know, certain levels of rewards or leaderboards. There's lots of ways that you can provide feedback on what people know and their performance overall. Uh, the next one is you want to create a connection. And this goes back to um, not just about games, but gamification. And just to define the difference between the two, games are your playable experience, right? Gamification is everything that wraps around it, your points, your badges, your leaderboards. Uh, you want to make sure that you uh, are providing a level of progression, a level of accomplishment, and that you're rewarding and celebrating what people are actually doing with your content. The more that you can celebrate their performance or their engagement, the more that they're going to stick with it and they're going to come back and do more. Um, all important points. Um, the last thing is how to get started. Uh, there are a whole bunch of questions that you certainly can ask yourself. So understand who your audience is. And that really runs the gamut from, um, you know, how many people am I trying to uh, uh, address here? Um, are, do they fall into a certain demographic by age or gender, or, or um, are they in a particular geo, or are they a particular function? Maybe you're going to have you know, a certain types of games that are going to be more applicable to a young Salesforce audience versus uh, an older analytical audience. It's, you want to make sure you understand your audience and make sure that you can find a game that's going to tie, tie to them based off of that. Then you want to try to figure out, once again, what performance objective am I trying to improve? Um, and, and it goes very much in hand in hand with number three. What skill sets um, do I need to improve uh, to, to make sure that that performance objective is reached? Number four, um, when you roll out this game, uh, where will it be rolled out? Is it going to be part of an e-learning initiative? Is it going to be part of an instructor-led training initiative? Is it going to be part of a pre- or post-training, um, maybe more mobile and micro? Will it be um, something that is scattered you know, throughout and, and uh, is part of training 
um, in different pockets. Um, the next question is, um, why is a game more effective than what you're doing today? How can you augment? I, don't, I, I never want to replace because I don't think a game on its own often can be successful. But if you take some of the slides you're doing or videos or lectures and you insert games as a tool to make sure you're augmenting it uh, and enhancing it, there are many, many ways that you can do that effectively. And the last thing is, and this goes back to the gamification component we talked about, how do you incentivize players? What is that incentive? Is it literally you know, having someone feel like they, they completed the game and they were at the top of the leaderboard? Is it someone who got you know, X number of stars? Is it making sure that, uh, you know, that a, a team beat another team? Is it literally tangible prizes? There's all sorts of ways that you can incentivize. But these are questions I think are really important because uh, a game on its own um, is okay. A game that enhances uh, or augments existing training is even better. And a game that's wrapped around a, a comprehensive program that has levels of incentives and ongoing communication, in my mind, is a gold standard. And we can show you many examples of that. Um, so that is, that is my uh, 30 cent tour on why gamifying your learning. Uh, happy to answer questions and certainly uh, happy to show plenty of other examples uh, offline as well. Thanks very much. Excellent. Thanks, Stephen. So we've got a couple questions here. Yeah. Um, let's see. If you, I see you showed the dashboard for a little bit. I, if you see all those data points, it looks like you're going to be using XAPI. Is that correct? I don't think SCORM has all that visibility behind the scenes. So it's a great question. So with the training arcade, um, we have a few things we're doing from a measure, measurement standpoint. Um, we, it, SCORM does not uh, cover all that stuff. Um, so we SCORM wrap all of our training arcade games and quite honestly, all of our um, custom training games as well. Um, we are XAPI ready so we can um, deploy our games with XAPI based on what people want. Uh, XAPI is always funny because we hear people saying, oh, we want to do XP, XAPI. And I said, well, what are you doing right now? And I said, we're not yet. Um, the reality is with XAPI, it's, it's honestly a discussion about what do we want to track and making sure that we um, identify that within the, the, the game itself. So that's easy, um, but it's a conversation. Um, the last thing is, is that uh, the Training Arcade has a pretty comprehensive um, uh, measurement dashboard. Um, so if you're using the games uh, 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 in the Training Arcade, you can use that dashboard alone. You can export that content out afterwards. Um, or you can plug it into your learning management system. So there's lots of options. Excellent. There's a question here about uh, if I don't want to build games myself, where can I buy them? So eLearning Brothers, we sell a bunch of games. You can also buy games from the Trading Arcade, also through eLearning Brothers. Loads of games available there uh, for you to just uh, download and insert into your course. Um, and on, in the case of the Trading Arcade, get tons and tons of analytics and find out exactly what uh, what your learners are getting or not getting. Um, another question here, would you consider a linear storyboard or story-based? Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, just one thing I want to layer on top of that because I think it's important. When it comes to eLearning Brothers games or the Training Arcade, both of them, I think one of the neat things about both of them is, um, A, neither requires coding, which is really important. B, both of them are relatively turnkey. So, uh, you know, within 15 to 30 minutes, you can build out a game, which is fantastic. You can also easily tweak them um, over time. So, you know, I, I think it's important that um, when any of us are thinking about building games, that we think about how do we customize the games that we're building or that we're buying with our content, with our messaging, with our branding. Um, all those examples that Andrew uh, mentioned give you the option of doing that. And I think it's important to, to, to do at least that 15 to 30 minute exercise um, because it will feel that much more um, on brand and on message and appropriate for your uh, your um, audience, your employee base. Sorry, Andrew, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 I'm sorry. I should have seen you uh, commenting. All right, here we go. Uh, would you consider a linear story, story-based story learning experience a form of gamification, or would you have to add gamified elements to it, like scoring, badging, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so... Um, I guess I guess I'd love to learn a little bit more about um, what you're looking to do. I, I a few things. So um, if it's about simulating out certain things, um, I and, and first I'm focusing on the word linear. Um, I'm a big believer that um, as as training, uh, you should try to think about from a simulation standpoint. How do you branch, right? How do you give someone the opportunity to go down different paths, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, one of the games in the training arcade is called Scenarios. 
Um, it literally, once again, is a 30 minute plugin. As long as you have your content done, you can build it very easily and we can show you several examples. Um, and what's nice about that is unlike a linear experience, you're seeing the repercussions of the decisions you're making. Um, you, you can, uh, and, and, and obviously our goal at the end of the day is to force someone down a certain path to show them the optimal. Um, but, but in going branching, you're able to show them here are the negative or positive repercussions of the decisions you're making and be able to get them back on track. And you can give them feedback along the way based on how, how they perform. Um, to answer your second part of the question, do I think um, you know, points and badges and leaderboards are important? I, I, think, they, um, I think they're secondary, to be frank. Um, I think that uh, having someone see the repercussions of the decisions they're making is primary. I think though giving them, uh, and you can do that with corrective and incorrective feedback loops, um, but I think also uh, providing a level of, uh, uh, of accomplishment or celebrating a level of accomplishment is, is important. And I think that's one of the things that the, the gamification components can, can do um, and can do turnkey. Um, and quite honestly, uh, in, in what we have with the training arcade um, are, are uh, already built into the platform for you to do yourself. When an employee's time is limited, how do you use a game instead of a quiz to check learning? And I think yeah. this comes down to, you know, the different types of games. So I, correct me if I'm wrong, a, a game from the training arcade would be not just checking your knowledge, but teaching you at the same time. But there are other games that can replace a knowledge check. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that, I mean, you look at some of the games, and I'm going to start with just the ones in the training arcade. You could take a basic game like Trivia, which happens to be one of the games, um, and, and uh, honestly, it's a glorified quiz, but it also has in it, um, you know, a timer system which you can turn on or off, has a point system, streak system, a leaderboard system, um, and all those things can be turned on or off, right? Um, so you can go as simple as a quiz, or you can take a quiz in the form of Trivia and maybe gamify it a little bit, right? Um, the other thing you can do is you can take, and, and obviously defining what limited time is, right? Uh, you could take a game like Jump, which is uh, is honestly the, the mix or, or match, which is like a match three Candy Crush game, which is the mix of a game experience, which might, you know, have someone playing for five, six, seven minutes um, and uh, continue with their content and answering questions over and over again, which they wouldn't do in a quiz. Um, but in my mind, if you can spare three minutes, hopefully you can spare five or six minutes, and you're going to drive the knowledge much deeper because they're going to see that question three, four, five times um, in the context of wanting to get higher and higher in the game. It's just a result that the questions will pop up over time as well. Um, so while I think it's important to be mindful of, gosh, I don't want my employees playing games all the time. Nobody does, right? That's not a very effective as, as far as, um, you know, having employees be productive. At the same time, you want to make sure that you're going to, you're going to, your training is going to be really successful and reinforce the material. And I think taking a few extra minutes to use it through gameplay versus a quiz will accomplish that on a much, much deeper level. What about learners who struggle to succeed at the game itself? So there's lots of different options. You can take, once again, like the simpler games, like a, a, a trivia game, which is a, a quiz, and you can leave it at that. Um, if you say, gosh, my workforce um, overall, you know, some, some people, by the way, also will take content and they'll say, you can you know, either play this as this gamier game um, and have fun and learn at the same time, or you can do something that's a little simpler, like a traditional quiz or trivia game um, and, and leave it at that. Uh, I think that in many ways, I think that giving that choice to employees, you can build it once, copy it, um, and deploy it as both those uh, options can be successful. It really depends on how diverse your workforce is and whether you want to give them that choice. Uh, for those of us dealing with an LMS, is it possible to use gamification in an, LMM, in an LMS and use the grade center of the LMS? Yeah, it's a great, great question. So um, the training arcade itself plugs into any learning management system um, and quite honestly, any of the rapid authoring tools as well. Um, and uh, with that comes um, obviously a level of gamification, your point system, your streak system, uh, your leaderboard system. Uh, so all that comes and, and can, in essence, gamify your learning management system. Um, if you don't have a, a, a learning management system, and I, I didn't put any slides in here, another platform that we have is called Motivate Cloud. Um, and Motivate Cloud is a gamified learning management system. It allows you basically to have all your content, but you're also giving people points and leaderboard status and badges and tangible rewards for learning 
and for actually socializing with one another and sharing best practices. So certainly happy to talk about that separately, um, but that, you know, that th there's lots of ways you can either gamify your existing learner management system or um, we, we have another solution that is worth looking at if that's important to you. Excellent. There's a, another question here. Are games are these games developed in authoring tools like Storyline, or do you use additional tools? Um, there are several games um, in the eLearning Brothers library that were developed in Storyline, Captivate, Lectora, and you can grab those and put them directly into your authoring tool and move forward with those. Uh, the game agency is slightly different, but you you said Stephen that they're all 100% compatible with the authoring tools. They are, yeah. So when you build them in uh, the, the training arcade, you can basically put them right into an authoring tool as a web object. Um, and so they, they play seam seamlessly with you know, any of the rapid authoring tools. Um, or you can just do them as a SCORM wrapper um, uh, and put them right into your LMS. So either way, uh, pretty straightforward. Also worth noting that um, all the games in the training arcade are available in 15 languages. Um, and they all come with you know, bells and whistles like SSO integration and um, other forms of integration as well, and then obviously pretty deep analytics that you're not going to get with, with most games out there. Excellent. One uh, other question that you may not have been thinking you were going to do today. Can you give us an example of some of the games in the training arcade? Yeah, uh, happy to. Um, if you want to just take back the screen for one second while I set up my computer. Sure. We'll do that. Uh, all right. While he's doing this, I want to let everybody know about uh, what's coming up. You know, I'll, I'll share this uh, really quickly. Let's make sure you're seeing my screen. Okay, so uh, ELBX Online all this week is about games. It's about games. Um, if you can't, uh, if you have questions that we're not answering, if some of these topics are the kind of thing that you are interested in, you can definitely jump onto eLearningBrothers.com and then up here in the top right corner, there's ELBX and then online. So this is the uh, gamification week. Today we're talking about why gamify your learning. Tomorrow we're going to talk about game-based design. Uh, Wednesday we're going to have best practices in gamification. That'll be really good. Um, building an advanced game and storyline is coming up as well. Um, that will be from our own Bill Milstead. He's going to be talking about one of the most advanced games I've ever seen in storyline called Evelyn's Quest. And uh, he'll talk about how he built that and you can pick up some ideas and tools that way. And then on Friday, we will have the game agency back to talk about uh, how you can get a return on your investment in games. So uh, by, by all means, you know, sign up for more of these webinars later in this week. And don't forget that next week, we're going to be talking about building mobile and responsive training. And we've got five great uh, sessions on uh, mobile and responsive. So uh, check that out. Sign up for more of those uh, in your, when you have a moment. All right, you ready for it, Stephen? Super. So if you can see my screen, um, well, I, I'm going to pass it back to you here. Oh, great. Okay. So I'm bringing up uh, a few of the games that are in here. So we have eight games in here. The first one is Jeopardy. We launched this a few months ago, and we did this in collaboration with Sony Productions. Um, it uses the voice of Johnny Gilbert from the show itself. It uses um, you know your, your basic uh, game, and it has um, you know your uh, text input, but it also has uh, multiple choices, an uh, alternative option. By the way, most of the games that we have in here um, have uh, uh, five question types. We, we obviously didn't do that with um, uh, we didn't do that with Jeopardy because of the nature of the game. But we have normally um, multiple choice, multi-select, image match, text input, um, polling, uh, and multiple choice, multi-select, text input, polling, and uh, missing one more. Um, but uh, so all the games, uh, and what's really nice is that all the games have a level of data attached to it. So you know, in the case of Jeopardy, I know a lot of people obviously have built uh, in um, uh, have, have built you know Jeopardy games in PowerPoint before, and that's great. But taking it to the next level and making it much more interactive and making it um, team-based or um, individual competitive-based leaderboards and significant data is fantastic. So all right, so that's that's uh, that game. The next one is Jump. Uh, so I mentioned that uh, you could take more of a gamey game like Jump, uh, and I'm just gonna go past the uh, instructions. And the whole idea is you're jumping from platform to platform, uh, and you're answering questions along the way, right? So um, once again, you can take any of the question types you want. Uh, as you get questions correct, you're getting um, different uh, uh, jet packs, um, and and obviously the goal is to get higher and higher, um, and you know you can do that by 
getting to the right answer or getting to boost, and you want to avoid obstacles along the way. So that's that's the next game. The next game, as I mentioned, is something like a trivia game. Um, so this is, once again, in my mind, more of a glorified quiz. Um, uh, and let me just, just get past this tutorial really quickly. Um, and what's nice about this is uh, you, know, you can you can take the folks out there who may be uh, less, um, less comfortable playing a game and deliver something to them that is, uh, is, um, is going to reinforce the material without uh, making them feel uh, uncomfortable play, playing game, gameplay. So um, uh, another one is uh, Scramble. So this one, in my mind, actually looks like the simplest of all the games, but I think it's the most effective from a strategy standpoint. Um, so having someone uh, fill in different uh, words uh, letter by letter or take all the words and to um, make a sentence off of it um, uh, to, to complete a, a line of thinking. So um, so that's obviously filling in the words. Let's see if the, what the next one is. Um, great. And then this one is um, cybersecurity attacks uh, occur. No, hold on. Oops. Let's go back. Um, hacker attacks occur every 39 seconds. And what I like about this is it makes you really think through the content um, before you complete an answer. Um, so this this uh, platform has in it uh, eight games in total. Jeopardy we just talked about. Jump we talked about as well. Um, Trivia we talked about. Match three, which or match, which is like a Candy Crush game. Uh, we use questions before and throughout different. Um, Levels, uh, you have Scramble, which we talked about. Um, scenarios is one that we're actually um, we're doing a relaunch of right now, which I'm really excited about, um, which is about branching dialogues and really helps someone go through down uh, different uh, soft skills um, like uh, customer service or sales training or management training, negotiations. Um, sort it is dragging and dropping the right category into the right order and recalls about watching videos and um, images and answering questions about them. But um, collectively, all these uh, address different types of learning objectives. Some of them are more appropriate for individual play and some of them are more appropriate for um, group play. Excellent. That uh, definitely answers that question. Um, I'm going to take the screen back just for a moment again here. Um, we're we're, we're going to wrap up a little bit early today. Um, I don't know if you... <laughs> Steven's on vacation, so he is very kindly uh, talking to us today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow him to step out a little early today, but I do want to talk about what's here on the screen. So I already showed you ELBX Online there in the on the right, uh, what's coming up for the rest of this week and next week. Um, it's going to run, it's uh, after that, there's two more weeks in addition. The last week is the first week of April. Also, ELBX Live is coming up. We have early bird pricing going on right now. So if you want to learn more about that, elearningbrothers.com, ELBX, and then look for the 2019 live event. Are you coming this year, Stephen? Uh, I, I haven't received my invite, but I will be there if I get one. So shoot, uh, I'll send you an email right, at, email right after this. Then <laughs> make sure you get invited. Yeah, look, um, look at also it. there on the left side. Pick your ten free assets. So the eLearning Brothers Asset Library. You can now grab a, a seven-day free trial where you can grab ten assets. Um, you can try some of the eLearning Brothers games in there as well. And if you guys have questions about the Training Arcade and you want to see more of these games in action and see how they can apply directly to your organization or what you're trying to accomplish. Give us a phone call. There's that number at the bottom, 801-796-2767, and, uh, and we'll be happy to show you those. We'll demo those uh, just for you and see the best game that's for your uh, organization. Um, so, yeah, give us a call or send us an email at info at elearningbrothers.com. We're happy to show you anything that you need. Thanks again, Stephen. This has been great. Thank you, and, guys. Uh, we'll see you again on Friday, and we'll see everybody else hopefully tomorrow. See you, awesome. guys. Thank you.